Hi, this is Joseph Lubhatia and we are here to shoot on the cloud and account in Atlanta. Today we have with us Alex Zenla, co-founder and CTO of Idera. Alex, great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a great show thus far and there's much more to do. Yeah, I, we will talk about the show, of course. But before that, I want to talk about the company itself. Is it related with new company? Sometimes when we look at the world around us, we look, hey, Every problem is already solved. There's nothing to be solved. So talk about the origin story of Idera. What led you folks to start the company? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I was spending my time in the Internet of Things, not in cloud native at all, uh, just spending time uh, making devices connect and communicate with each other in the world. Um, I started doing that when I was 14 years old, uh, been doing open source all that time. Uh, I'm 26 years old now, so I've got 12 years roughly in, in experience uh, in the full-time world. And uh, one of the challenges with the Internet of Things is always the security aspect. They always say that the S in IoT stands for security. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, you know, what drove me to doing what I'm doing. But uh, I ended up working for Google on the Internet of Things and trying to solve their security challenges for their IoT systems and all of their uh, various building deployments. And uh, one of the things I saw is that they needed to have a form of isolation uh, to separate uh, workloads across uh, their systems. Um, and so I was brought in to kind of try to solve some of those problems. but. Uh, there really wasn't uh, the technologies available out there. Uh, so there was a technology G-Visor by Google, but it wasn't really uh, designed for high performance, which is what you need in the industrial IoT space. Uh, so I started building out a new technology in my free time, uh, and that technology is what became Adara. Uh, my good friend Ariadne Connell of 10 years at the time, uh, she was uh, the uh, one of the original developers on ChainGuard. Uh, she created ChainGuard Images and Wolfie, and uh, she was very interested in what I was doing. And so we both started a company together. And then Emily also joined us uh, as CEO. Can you talk about what is the state of S in IoT today yes. uh, versus when we talked about and what are the core foundational components of Idera. I have witnessed many, many crimes done effectively in the security of IoT, just so many different problems and things not, uh, not being done right. But um, the core thing that I really struggled with was, uh, you know, you typically have, uh, especially in the industrial IoT space, electrical engineers and mechanical engineers who may not know very much about software deploying applications to these uh, devices that we all uh, know and love. I say love with a <laughs> hesitation, but... Uh, There's no LDR in love, right? Right, right, right. So, uh, you know, I think uh, the biggest challenge was uh, seeing security go by the wayside and the, and the uh, kind of desire for functionality. Uh, everyone wanted to connect IoT devices to their cloud, but they didn't want to update them. I've seen uh, uh, industrial IoT systems that are, uh, you know, five years out of date on their Linux kernel. And the fundamental thing that I realized with Adara is if we're going to solve these problems, we really have to think deep about how we actually build software and run it today. And uh, Adara was sort of born out of that frustration of not having um, a good component like containers um, that was actually secure. Um, our challenge with containers today is that they're just Linux processes that just run and happen to look like a container, but containers are not actually a concept in the Linux kernel. They are a, a collection of different concepts that have been built out to look like containers. Um, and so my dream was always to make a way for people to run their IoT applications, but in uh, isolated environments so that they could actually trust and know that if two applications are running on the same piece of hardware, that they won't interfere with each other. And it was my co-founder, Ariadne Connell, who goes, I think you're thinking too small. I think IoT is, is, is only a small component, that actually we have this problem all across the industry. And that's where um, Adara was sort of 
built on this concept of if we really rebuild how we think about computing and how we run our containers and build technology that makes containers run natively on hardware, then we can get really, really far in the security of, of systems. And uh, Adara uh, sort of built out this idea of a hardened runtime. Um, you've probably heard of hardened container images from ChainGuard and similar. Um, but what hardened runtime is, is about the best place to run those hardened images. A really hardened place that you can trust that your containers are gonna run securely and isolated from each other. You can trust that security boundary. So our technology gives you that capability by working below the kernel and providing a new mechanism for running containers uh, using a new concept in Adara called zones. Since uh, these days, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's IoT or massive data center, everybody's talking about only one thing, which is AI, right? So can you also talk about how is your work on hardened runtime have an impact of the way we think of security, containers, and AI workloads. It's a huge thing for AI-generated code. I mean, uh, I think uh, I just had a session this week where I basically said that I'm genuinely terrified for the world with the pace at which we're deploying AI-generated code that hasn't been audited by humans. Um, and so the security of systems becomes even more important in the AI world, uh, not to mention AI agents and things like computer use, where that isolation is really, really required. You know a sandbox that you can actually trust and run stuff and experiment with is super important in today's AI world. But not just that, I think GPUs are also a really interesting thing. They don't really work the same way CPUs work. And so one of the fundamental things that Adara is working on is a new virtualization system for GPUs that allows you to actually isolate GPUs and uh, kind of timeshare and trust that your GPUs are not going to become a weakness in your security infrastructure. Today, we see GPUs really kind of almost uh, disabling security in a lot of systems. People just accept the fact that uh, NVIDIA's giant proprietary drivers are going to uh, exist on your system and potentially uh, act as a, a, a security uh, weakness in your system. Um, but Adara doesn't accept that fact. We, we believe that uh, the future is, is virtualizing GPUs and providing that same kind of container-like mechanism, but for GPUs. And so we've been very heavily focused on the future of that and how that works with a hardware-centric, hardware-up kind of perspective on uh, isolation and security in containers today. Can you also talk about some of the core components of your architecture, whether it's going to be hypervisor, micro VMs, uh, and how do they fit into this philosophy of hardened runtime? So we have a, uh, a mechanism, a hypervisor, that uh, significantly reduces the amount of code that runs on directly to the hardware. Um, so our technology is based on and inspired by Zen, which is a uh, Linux Foundation project. Uh, it's used in a lot of safety critical applications like automotive, um, and it's even uh, recently safety certified. And the goal of it is to provide a very thin layer that actually provides that virtualization of CPU and memory and hardware resources. Uh, so our technology uh, builds on top of that, but with uh, some modifications that make it more secure, and additionally uh, provides a Rust-based control plane and uh, infrastructure management to natively run containers on this hypervisor. Um, so when you deploy Adara today, you run it either in Kubernetes or outside Kubernetes, and we are able to create uh, these concepts called Adara zones that provide an actual isolated environment for you to run workloads or to run uh, uh, applications or just use as a sandbox for code. Um, and this is a very powerful concept because you can connect devices directly up to the zones and actually run um, multi-tenant infrastructure in that way. Um, so uh, we can hook into Kubernetes and we uh, act as a CRI in the Kubernetes parlance. And that allows us to kind of get a full view of the Kubernetes infrastructure. 
and our technology natively maps uh, Kubernetes pods to Adara zones. So each pod that runs inside the Kubernetes is completely isolated from each other. Linux Foundation, you mentioned, they have a lot of projects. Elisa project is there, you know, for you know, security for, and then of course Zephyr is also there. Are you leveraging any of these open source projects or uh, no, you actually compete with them? Uh, I wouldn't say compete. We're very friendly with, uh, with all the various Linux Foundation projects, I think. Um, you know, we were very heavy into Zen and we contribute back and uh, we do a number of things in that space. Um, but we also contribute to the Linux kernel. Um, we, uh, you know, I've uh, recently found a, a few CVEs in the Linux kernel that were uh, patched. Uh, I think that was actually almost a year ago now, which is pretty nuts. Um, and then uh, we have, uh, you know, contributed a number of patches and also focusing on um, kind of container native Linux in a way. So building uh, the Linux kernel into OCI images, one of the cool things that we're able to do is um, kind of utilize uh, OCI images as a component for deployment and management of our systems. So I'd say we're very friendly with uh, Linux projects. Um, we're not involved in every Linux project out there, of course, but um, you know we, we're very interested in collaboration on those things. And we like to give back to our community. And, um, you know, we recently released a new bootloader for Linux called Sprout, um, which is a huge milestone for us. Um, and it reduces boot times for people's Linux systems, especially huge in the uh, AI space right now, where um, the, uh, the way that Linux boots today is using something called Grub, which has been around for 20 years. And uh, uh, Sprout was actually designed to reduce boot times because Grub can take minutes to boot on really complex hardware. And we looked at it and said, I think we can reduce that to milliseconds. And so Sprout is all about reducing that. So um, we really, really believe in um, the Linux Foundation and, and the projects that they have. And I uh, care about contributing back and making things better for everyone. And that's the only way open source works. Now, we are here to point, what kind of announcements that you folks made here at the show? We've made a number of announcements. Uh, most excitingly is uh, uh, Adara and Falco. So um, we've integrated the Falco engine directly into Adara. So if you deploy Adara today, you can actually send system call events directly uh, from Adara into um, uh, into uh, your Falco engine, uh, whatever that may be. Um, and that's been really great. The Sysdig people and the Falco people have been really fantastic to work with. Uh, and our technology kind of demonstrates a the capability of uh, our hypervisor because we're able to stream system call events directly out of the hypervisor and into Falco plugins and things like that. Um, so it's a very huge partnership for us. And um, also recently uh, we released uh, information about our Trail of Bits audit uh, where we had a uh, really, really great audit and they uh, found that our uh, security boundaries were a very significant contributor to the fact that uh, we had no medium or high uh, vulnerabilities uh, during our, our audit. Um, so very, very exciting stuff. And uh, the uh, stats around how we increase the security of systems are absolutely amazing. Um, we were able to calculate that we uh, reduced the amount of uh, code inside of uh, Ring Zero, which is the lowest layer of the hardware, um, down by 95 to 97%, which is uh, pretty impressive. And can you talk about, uh, because Kubernetes is as you complex, IoT devices are tiny, small, you have to be very, very, <clears throat> you have to be very, very resource constrained. Uh, how, how does this, your approach uh, can impact Kubernetes? One of the cool things about our technology is because we have such low level access to the hardware, um, we can get more out of it. And um, one of the key things about Kubernetes is it really, really loves large nodes. It really, really wants that. And so our technology allows you to do bin packing and things like that and to work on smaller systems. But I think even for systems where Kubernetes maybe isn't appropriate, if you have an edge device that's very, very tiny, our technology can um, act in a mode where you can basically deploy a single application and protect it um, from the hardware. And I think that's very powerful. Um, but Kubernetes is a very interesting project because it's being deployed, it's kind of taken over the world arguably, and uh, it, it's it's super flexible where you run it. You know, you have people that are running massive nodes or tiny nodes with it. Um, and our technology kind of works across uh, those systems. And 
uh, it's very important, I think, for uh, a system like ours to be flexible in that regard. Let's go back to AI. You know, as uh, AI workloads scale, X, I mean, security has always been, uh, I mean, security has used to be an afterthought, some of those problems, but that is not the case anymore. But, 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 but talk about uh, the impact of your technology when it comes to AI workloads, whether it's models or data pipelines. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, the, the first use case that always comes to mind for me is uh, what do you do about all the AI generated code that I, I mentioned earlier? And um, if you deploy your code with Adara, uh, you can guarantee that everything is actually isolated from each other and know that a vulnerability in AI generated code will not d negatively impact your deployment across uh, your staff. Um, so one AI generated uh, piece of code can't impact another. Um, so I think that's the major use case that immediately comes to mind. But the GPU use case is also very interesting. So um, you have uh, inference and you have training, and you also have kind of this other thing of computer use and uh, the need for uh, sandboxing of uh, kind of environments for agents to actually work inside of rather than just running the application themselves. Um, for all of these use cases, we uh, Adara kind of deploys and is able to be used for all of them. Um, for uh, training and inference, we have the GPU uh, pass-through and the ability to utilize GPUs directly with our platform. Um, and we also have virtualized GPUs for uh, splitting up GPUs and getting more out of the GPUs you have, so reducing um, the uh, amount of waste inside of uh, GPU deployments, which is super, super important for us. Um, and uh, the uh, lack of utilization that a lot of GPUs have right now uh, is, a, is a huge problem across the industry, I think. So uh, we've seen a lot of uptake with uh, GPU clouds and, and Neo clouds who are really interested in, in doing multi-tenancy on GPUs in a way that's much different and much more uh, closer to hardware while also being very performant. Um, I think that's the most interesting thing about the AI space right now is, um, you know, I've always heard security described as a catch-up race, you know, Every, everyone's always moving really, really fast, and then they realize that security matters. I think we're getting to that point where security does matter even more, but the performance is still is still super important. So our technology allowing you to be super performant because we're so low level, while also being very secure is, is a huge benefit for AI. Um, and then the AI agent uh, use case is super interesting. We um, just did uh, some research, our researcher Marina Moore, who's a part of TAG security here at the CNCF. Um, she just did some research and discovered that uh, our AI agents running on Adara uh, run faster than they do on Container D. And a lot of that is just based on the scheduling and the ability to recognize and really deal with the CPU and memory uh, of the hardware and actually get very low level. Like we can make micro optimizations and guarantee resources to applications, which is super important in the AI space. Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. Not only give a kind of uh, insight into your journey, Adira's journey, but also how your technology is making Linux boot faster yes. and making uh, things like Kubernetes also together. So thanks for sharing all those insights. And I, I do see that you folks are doing a lot of exciting work, so I would love to chat with you again. So yeah. I look forward to next year. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been very good conversation. Thank you.